in the name of Allah, our Creator, the Creator of the universe and of everything that's in it. I greet you all in our Islamic way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace, mercy, and blessings be with you all. Competitiveness is a great motivation to man, but keeping it in its material framework can be very damaging to man. And that's why I would like to take this competitiveness outside its material framework and remind everybody that the best way of being competitive is to understand who you are, who has created you and sent you into this world, what's your message in it, how can you fulfill that message to the best of your abilities and what's for you after this life. Such basic questions cannot be correctly addressed by man and hence the need for divine guidance. The only form of divine guidance that has been kept intact in exactly the same language of revelation is the Quran. And today I would like to address a very critical scientific issue that is covered by five verses in the Quran to testify to the divine purity of this noble book and to invite everybody to read it, even in translation, although we know that translations cannot do justice to the nobility of the Quran and the beauty of the Quran as expressed in the Arabic language. The area of creation, destruction, and the recreation of the universe is one of the critical areas that's facing man. The Quran spells this issue out in only five verses that have been proved to be scientifically very precisely correct. In Surah Al-Dhariyat we read, وَالسَّمَاءَ بَنَيْنَاهَا بِأَيْدٍ وَإِنَّا لَمُسِعُونَ Verily, the firmament we have built with might and verily we are currently expanding it. The expansion of the universe was discovered at the beginning of the 20th century and was confirmed towards the middle of the 20th century and it became one of the realities of our time. If we go back by this expansion against time, we find that this universe would coalesce into a singularity, a single entity. And this single entity has been discussed by many scholars of our time. Yet the Quran has expounded this fact by reading in Surah Al-Anbiya, أَوَلَمْ يَرَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ كَانَتَا رَتْقًا فَفَتَقْنَاهُمَا وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيْ أَفَلَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Having the unbelievers seen that the heavens and the earth were initially gathered together or condensed in one initial singularity and then we clove them asunder. This became the dominant theory that can explain the origin of our universe. This initial entity exploded into a cloud of smoke. From that smoke, Allah has created both the earth and every heavenly body around us. And the Quran reads in Surah Fusilat, ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى إِلَى السَّمَاءِ وَهِيَ ذُخَانٍ فَقَالَ لَهَا وَلِلْأَرْضِ إِتِيَا طَوْعًا أَوْ كَرْهَا قَالَتَا أَتَيْنَا طَائِعِينَ Then he, meaning Allah, our Creator, turned it to the sky when it was just a smoke and said to it and to the earth, come into being willingly or unwillingly. They both said, we do come in willing obedience. And this smoke has just been photographed by satellites that have passed the uh, zone of pollution and the zone of clouds surrounding the Earth. The Big Bang Theory is the most widely accepted theory to explain the origin of the universe. And areas of creation, annihilation, and resurrection 
cannot be uh, finally decided by man, and that's why we can take these cosmic verses to substantiate one of the main theories that are available, and in this way we are supporting science with the Quran, not vice versa. The expansion of the universe cannot go uh, to an unlimited time. Uh, the, this expansion is slowing down at the current time, and the temperature of the universe is cooling down, and hence it uh, uh, has been uh, generally accepted that the expansion will come to a, a big halt, and then gravity will collect that universe into in an initial singularity, similar to the one from which it was created. And this is called the Big Crunch Theory, and we read in the glorious Quran, in Surah Al-Anbiya as well, يَوْمَ نَطْوِ السَّمَاءَ كَطَيِّ السِّجِلِّ لِلْكُتُبِ كَمَا بَدَأْنَا أَوَّلَ خَلْقٍ نُعِيدُهُ وَعَدًا عَلَيْنَا إِنَّا كُنَّا فَاعِلِينَ The day will come when we roll up the heaven in the same way a scroll rolls up its writings or its books. As we started the first creation, we repeat it in exactly the same manner, a promise upon us we have undertaken verily we were to fulfill. And from the Quran, we can substantiate these two basic theories, the Big Bang Theory for the creation of the universe and the Big Crunch Theory that speaks about the termination of our existence. To this point, nobody, scientists or non-scientists, can tell us what will happen after that. They stop at that point and nobody can tell us what will happen after that. Only the Quran can explain this to us by saying, uh, This universe will be completely destroyed. Allah will create another universe, a different earth from ours, and different firmaments from the firmaments that are surrounding us, surrounding us today, and we will be resurrected from this new earth. The day will come when the earth is replaced by a different earth, and so are the heavens. These five uh, separate verses can address one of the most critically difficult scientific issue, the creation, the annihilation, and the recreation of the universe. And the precision, the scientific precision of these cosmic verses are only an example. The Quran contains 12,000 uh, cosmic verses that have been proved to be absolutely scientifically precise. And this is a testimony to the people of our time to read the Quran even in a translation and judge for themselves whether this is the word of God or the word of man. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.